Hi, it's Liz again with the That's Crafty Journal It template set. Um, so in this video, what I want to show you is how to stitch bind your pages into your cover. So in the first video, I showed you how to put the cover together using our Tyvek little strips to create our little binder shape for the cover. So what I want to do now is actually show you how to use the templates to line up for your binding holes and also how to stitch in your pages. So I've just got a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper that I want for my cover. So I just need to make sure that this is facing down because that's what I want on the front of my cover. And then I'm going to put some glue on the back of this cover where the Tyvek sheet is. So I've just got some craft, that's crafty, um, all multi-purpose adhesive. Put a liberal amount on and either with a spreader or an old brush or your fingertips, just going to rub that glue into the cover just so it's nicely stuck down and then attach that to my scrapbook paper. Now I want to leave a little gap to the left and to the right of my cover of my book and that's just to make sure when I fold it all together that this, the paper is wide enough to fit the front cover because what sometimes happens when your book folds up it stretches the paper at the side so if you cut it to exactly the same size as your book cover you might find that your paper isn't actually big enough to cover so all I want to do is just cut the top and the bottom that's fine that won't move anywhere but when I start folding the sides in it just it just starts to move a little bit at the side so having that overlap to the left and to the right just just avoids that so pressing down to make sure that my glue is nicely stuck down on the back of my book and then I'm just carefully folding those two sides of the spine up and then what that does it gives a really nice neat finish to the inside of my book and there's no gaps so it's all nicely stuck down and then I can just trim off the edges at the side and what I tend to do when I finish binding my book I will go around the edges either with some black distress ink or some um, acrylic paint or even a little bit of gold paint that's really nice to wedge round to make it look a really nice book to finish so there we go I've got my front cover with the paper on and now what I want to do is just concentrate on this spine here so just with a small scrap that you might have left it needs to be approximately one and a half two inches wider than the spine on either side so just got a piece of scrap that was left from putting the cover piece on that's going to be long enough for me so I just need to measure so it's about one and a half inches to the left and to the right and I'll just cut that strip out and this is where it will fit over the top of my spine and I'll put my binding holes in in a second but this is where you have to go very very gently so I'm going to attach some glue all the way along this paying particular attention to the sides and the top and the bottom and it doesn't really matter if it's not exactly um, three and a half inches wide across that spine you need it enough so that you can fold your two sides of your book cover to together um, and it doesn't show any of the spine so I'll just stick that on cut away any excess so now what I want to do is just gently fold these sides up together so with my bone folder, 
just going to find where that little gap is between the spine and the side page of the cover and I'm just rubbing really gently because what I want to do is just stretch the fibres of that paper so that when I lift that cover up it doesn't gather the paper and you really need to make sure that your paper is nicely stuck down as well because what can happen is that it can start to gather and there'll be a gap between your paper and your actual mount board that you've your cover board that you've created the cover from and I'll do exactly the same on the other side so really gently just down that little gusset that you created by leaving a gap between your spine and the cover and that's why it's really nice to use quite thick cardstock here or some nice scrapbook paper because obviously if you're going to be sort of pressing into it with very thin paper the danger is you could tear it so there we go if you can see it's just gone into that gap there and there so when I fold my book together there isn't a gap between the paper and the cover board itself and then what I would do to finish decorating it would just be two pieces of scrapbook paper to the left and to the right but I will do that later so what I want to do now is show you where to put your stitching holes so I've got my book cover here and I'm going to get my template again so this is number five because my cover size is six by four and I want to put in um, some stitching holes so these are on the right hand side the left hand holes are for elastic binding but the ones on the right are for my stitching holes so at the top and at the bottom you need to line up your notches with the spine there with the side of the spine so that it's centre where the bottom of that little notch is lines up with your lines on your hinge top and bottom and then with a pencil just mark in those sets of holes There we go. So I've got those pencil marked in and then with my pokey tool I'm just going to go through that template that I've created in pencil and I'm just giving a little bit of swirl round so that my stitching holes are going to be nice and big to allow for my needle and thread to go through. So there I've got my little stitching holes pushed through into the spine of my book. Okay, so we've done the stitching holes for the cover, so what I want to concentrate now are the inside pages. So the template that I need for this is template number 7, so that will fit once folded inside my book cover. So I have some tea stain papers that I'm going to use for my inside pages. So what I want to do is just draw around one of those pages. Just draw around with a pencil. And then I'll also mark down the centre. And at the minute I'm just going to cut one of these pages out. And the reason for that is once it's folded and I've put my other pages to the centre of that, um, it tends to push out the inner pages. I'll show you what I mean when I cut this one out. So I just tend to cut the first page out, which is going to be the outer page in my set of papers called a signature. And then these pages, which I haven't cut down yet, I'm just going to fold them in half. And for my signatures, I like to use around four or five pages, depending on how thick the papers are. So when I put that paper 
over the top all I need to do now is just draw around where that overlaps and then with either a pair of scissors or your paper trimmer depending on how thick your paper is just cut that down and what I use as well is um, a little bulldog clip just to hold those pages tight at the top so that when I cut down I get a nice straight line and do the same at the bottom and just cut along the top so that now when I put my pages inside the outer cover it's a really nice flush edge at the side so what I want to do now is add the binding holes to this set of papers so that I can stitch it into my book. So I have my template ready, I have my foam mat because I need to poke the holes through in a second. So I'll give it a nice sharp crease and I'm just going to open it up to the centre just making sure that I haven't moved any of the pages. So if it's easier is just pop that little clip to the top or to the side just so that your pages don't move when you're putting in your binding holes. I'll just straighten mine back up again. There we go. And pop that on the top. So what I want to do is line up that centre bit with my template. So on this, the template that I need is on the left hand side because this has the five holes ready for stitching which will match my cover. So just using that template I'm just going to draw in those five holes and then with my pokey tool I'll just pierce through those holes. When I fold that over, I've got all my stitching holes down the spine. So I've already done it with the other two signatures. So I'm ready now for stitching this into my book. So what I've got is a long piece of thread. Ready to stitch my pages in. So I've put a little knot on the end of it and I'm going to start with this first line here. So I'll get in my first signature, I'll start from the inside. So I just pop my needle through that centre hole and then find the centre hole of the first line and pulling my needle through. I want to leave a little tail on the inside of my book so that's why I put a little knot on it but I'll hold it down as well so I'm on the outside of my cover and I just want to come to that stitch above it so where that piercing hole is I come through and then back into the centre of my book and I've still got my tail there in the middle and I'm going to pull that so it's a straight stitch so when you pull, just try and pull upwards rather than from side to side because you might tear the paper. So then I'm just going to come to the stitch above it and then back through into my spine so that my needle is back out on the outside. And then what I want to do is go back in to the stitch underneath. So go back in that hole that we've just done. So when you're going back into a hole that you've already stitched through, just be careful that you don't actually stitch through the thread. Just try and go through the hole without um, splitting the thread underneath. It just makes it more difficult to straighten and tighten up those stitches. So the next stitch I want to do, I actually want to jump across that middle stitch. So just miss the middle stitch out 
go to the next one and bring your thread back out to the outside come down to this bottom hole back through to the center of your book and again like we did at the top we're going to go back into that hole back outside and then finally back up through the center but this time I want to make sure that my needle comes to the other side of that long stitch across so I've got my little tail to the left and the thread that I've just brought up from the outside is to the right of that middle stitch so it means I can now tie that off into a little knot and I've made sure all my stitches are nice and tight and I can just chop that off like that so that is my first signature sewn into my book so it's got a lovely straight edge on the outside and then a really lovely straight line of stitches on the inside so again I'm just going to move that page closed and I'm going to start on the middle pages so again create a little knot on the end of your thread and that's only so you don't pull it all the way through because you do need to leave a little tail on the inside so that you can tie it off at the end so through that centre stitch and then through the centre hole on your spine pull your thread through but leave a little tail and then I'm going to come to this hole above poke that through and then all the way through to your pages on the inside and it does get a little bit more busy now because you've obviously got those pages that you've already stitched in so if you just take your time with it you'll be fine so I'm on the inside I'm going to the stitch above and then stitching through to the outside back through that hole that I've just come out of back through to the center miss the middle stitch out go straight across back out down to the bottom hole back up through into your pages in the middle I'll find my hole there there we go back through that stitch and then finally back up through the centre and this time just need to make sure my tail's to the left of that middle stitch so that when I bring my needle back through that's to the right of that middle stitch make sure everything's pulled nice and tightly and then tie that off into a little knot I'll just chop the ends off there and then I can just now do the final signature and stitch that in hopefully I've got enough string left on my needle so again just fold that down and I'll come back to this final signature so through my centre holes make sure that's lined up left a little tail through the centre left my little tail in the middle on the outside through to the middle of my book go to the stitch above back to the outside and then just carry on as we've done before so just threading and weaving in and out of those pages from the outside to the inside
And if you feel that you haven't got enough thread, just take your needle out and just get yourself another long piece of thread because it's nothing worse than just running out right at the end. Hopefully I will have enough thread just to finish mine off. So back out through the centre and then finally, oh I think I've just got enough thread there, finally back through the centre making sure my tail's on the left of that stitch so that when I bring my needle up it will be on the right of that stitch like that. I'm going to take my needle off there, pull everything nice and tight and tie that off into a little knot. There we go, just put my needle away so don't lose that. And there we go, I have all my stitches done. All my books have been attached to the spine with a really li lovely line of stitching. And that just needs finishing now, so I'll put the side pages on there. But there is my book nicely coming together. Okay, so in the next video, I'll show you how I do my elastic binding. But if you've got any questions or any problems, just let me know at Liz Wheeler Designs and I will try my very hardest to help you out. Alright then, see you later. Bye.